Today we're going to discuss the development of the Edison cylinder record. Well, we all know the story about Thomas Edison inventing the phonograph in 1877, uh, giving a sketch to his faithful assistant John Cruzy to make, and then the famous words, Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went the lamb was sure to go. We all pretty much know that story, but going into the future a little bit, some people picked up on the phonograph, notably Chichester Bell and Charles Sumner Tainer, uh, associates of Alexander Graham Bell, and they had worked together at the Volta Laboratories on a machine called the graphophone, which used a Zacharite-coated cardboard cylinders. I can't show you one because they're extremely rare and hard to find, and only a few people own them, and I've never heard actual one played, so I have no idea what they sound like. Never heard one. They did record on a one use, you couldn't shave the record off, cardboard cylinder coated with azacharite wax. I believe that the thread per inch was around 160 threads per inch, so you could get a fairly long letter on them, but what they sound like, I have no idea. But I can tell you about Edison developing the phonograph in later years, as far as the wax records. The uh, perfected phonograph was a precursor from this machine, which was developed by Ezra Gilliland in 1887. And, of course, with instructions from Thomas Edison. You notice it has a cylinder record, an electric motor, and a spectacle carriage. So that is the uh, machine that was before the perfected phonograph. And then this is the 1888-1889 early North American spectacle perfected phonograph. So we'll start with the cylinders that you see down there in the corner. They were made of this material. This is what's known as, well, Edison Laboratory Museum calls it yellow paraffin, but it's not. Uh, this is the, the substance. It is uh, made out of steric acid, beeswax, saracen, and carnauba wax. And it's actually pretty, Not, it's not too soft. It's, it's soft enough for a curl shaving off of it. But I've done tests with this kind of wax before. And I've got, oh, like 25, 30 plays before there was a big loss or degradation in sound quality. But that was with a ball stylus, the early machine that used the this compound. By the way, all compounds for Edison were developed by a chemist named Jonas Owlsworth who worked with Edison. And uh, these are from around uh, June 16, 1888, that this formula was used. And then by late 1888, he started to work with metallic soaps. Aluminum and lead soaps were first tried uh, and uh, was not really practical with the metallic soaps until 1889. In fact, the very first half of 1889, there was a formula number 957, which was an aluminum sodium stearate soap tempered with red oleic acid. And that was a dismal failure because the oleic acid would leach out of the... Uh, compound and uh, spoil the recording. Uh, Jonas Ellsworth had visions of losing his job, but the practical uh, formula was this. Well, this box is not original to the record. This box is probably from about 1908-1909. However, this is the earliest link we have to commercial sound recording. This is an actual Edison blank. If you notice, it has the channeled rim. That was to take a paper label. And this record actually dates between 1890 and 94. 
It's uh, the very first record catalog was 1890, and uh, both the Edison Phonograph Works and the Columbia Graphophone Company. I shouldn't say Columbia Graphophone Company. That is incorrect. The Columbia Phonograph Company. It was a Washington, D.C. branch of the North American Phonograph Company were the primary recorders of music cylinders. In fact, the North American Phonograph Company didn't originally take music recording very seriously. They wanted to sell cylinders as an office aid or a new assist to assist stenograph- you know, stenographers and uh, secretaries to transcribe uh, while the boss was dictating a cylinder could be transcribed instead of him having to take his time to talk to the secretary directly. He could then make several cylinders and take it and they could type right off it. That was the original intention of the North American Phonograph Company was to lease the cylinders and the phonographs as an office aid to courthouses and and uh, clerks and things like that. So that was the development of the uh, brown wax cylinder is this formula, which is aluminum sodium stearate and sericin wax. At this time that this was made, the aluminum was obtained from acetate of aluminum, so they had to cook the uh, wax compound quite high and for a long time to boil off the acetic acid. And this smells to me like a regular cylinder from the later time period. But this is a cylinder dating from 1889 to about 1894. These early Edison blanks have a single spiral inside of them. If I can turn it around. It starts in one place and ends in one place. So that's the starting and ending. I really don't like handling the cylinder because it's among some of the oldest ones that I own. The early Edison cylinders do have a telltale pore streak inside of them that tell them apart from later cylinders. It's really hard to tell, but uh, if you look up on top there, if I can turn it, see that dark band you can kind of see in there? That has to do with the wax coming in the mold at one point through a hole there was a, a round bulge that you poured the wax in that funneled it into the mold that these were made in. The spiral was called in the patent a wax thread and it had a couple reasons. It pushed the dust particles off the mandrel as you push the record on so that the record would run concentrically on the mandrel of the phonograph. Uh, here is another North American era blank. This one must be very early because the channel is very crude. And notice the air bubble in the record. And how I know this is actually a North American era record is that it too has this curious band inside of it of dark wax. You can kind of, there we go. You can kind of see the band there of dark wax inside. That's from that, the way that the wax entered the mold. And again, the early blanks, Edison blanks, have a rounded edge and a single spiral. And this, again, is a very early blank, probably 1890. The Edison blank of later period uses... Uh, this is around 1900, and by this time, brown wax was almost on its way out because Edison went to a molded record. 
So we see a little difference, and the reason is is because the Columbia Graphophone or American Graphophone Company started also making blanks. It's kind of interesting that the oh this is a uh, around 1900 brown wax original blank, and if you notice this one. You see a start there, and if I turn it around, see another start. So you see the two, two, uh, here we go. We had a little fluff attached to the blank. But uh, you can see two places that it starts. And later on, the Edison blanks don't have that nice rounded edge on them anymore. It's more of an abrupt end and here we can see the two starts. See how it starts there, and then again. See it starting again, and I turn it around, it starts again. It has two places in the spiral core. So at some point, and nobody has been cooperative, probably just nobody knows, but uh, at some point, Edison went from a single to a double spiral. And the weird thing is that the Concerter Grand Records, which is a big 5-inch diameter brown wax record, uh, have the opposite. The Columbia seem to have a double spiral, and the Edisons have a single spiral in the Concerter Grand Records. So, so this is the original batting that came with it. So that uh, you basically wrap the cylinder up and then tuck the uh, wax paper and the uh, cotton batting in the record. And they did that so you could ship it out and it doesn't get broke. You can see some of the patents on it here. So that's the blank. Um, oh yes, we better put our, we, we still have some of the original packing material still with it. So that's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, we still make uh, bl blank cylinders. Here's a nice recent one. This one dates. This is a single spiral. I have single and double spiral blanks, but it has a single spiral in this one. I have two different molds. So this is the single spiral mold record. So we still make these metallic soap blanks. This is aluminum, sodium, stearate, and saracen wax. So we still make the same type of compound. And this is our more modern box. If North American would have had a box, this is similar to what it would have been. But they did not have labels on records at the time. It was to be just a plain cardboard container like this box. And has nothing on it, just plain cardboard. So that would be how the original ones would arrive until about 1898 or so. That's when they started putting labels on cylinders. Another kind of brown wax record is uh, a little... Uh, this is actually kind of a misnomer because this is not a... Um, this is not a cut record. This is a molded record. And the reason is, if you look inside, it doesn't have spirals, but it has annular rings. Notice that they're, they're not connected. Here, if I look carefully, you can see that they're not spirals. They're actually just rings as I turn it around. And it has a title around the outside. Molded records came into existence around 1902 and uh, replaced the cut records. Before that, there was a different ways of copying cylinders. One was tube copying, where you hooked the reproducer to the recorder of another phonograph and it would uh, the sound would transfer from the reproducer to the recorder and record onto another blank. And that was fined for what's called listening tube records. They don't have to be very loud. 
and they have a hollow sound anyway because you're listening to them with listening tubes. So they sounded good enough, and they did a lot of duplicating in the early days that way. And then as you got closer to the actual master, they actually would have a rack with about 14 phonographs. Actually, there's a record uh, picture in this book of... Uh, of similar to uh, that uh, scene with the recording. I guess just gotta gotta find the one. Bear with me a little bit while I find that. Here we go. Here's a picture and the phonograph and how to use it. That kind of shows a recording session around. This was typical around 1896 to 1900. You see the rack with all of the phonographs in it. The band plays to all these machines. And then the machines are fitted with blanks once again, and the process repeated until enough copies are made. So that is the early days of making cylinder records. And that is a little bit about the history of the Edison brown wax record. I have another video on Columbia, which is kind of interesting because there's a lot of theft in, in, in the Columbia story of the development of their records.